Good afternoon, everybody, and um, Happy New Year to all of you, and welcome to episode 152 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, a surprise episode, the first episode of the year, and surprise because I received this sample here today, just a few hours ago, and I thought, well, may as well start the year with a Chanel, why not, and, and a very, very highly anticipated Chanel. So I just decided um, we would do a video today. I, I need to do my usual thing and just make sure that everything is coming through on the tablet. Lots of comments here already. The first comment today goes to David. I hope you're all well, by the way. I hope the first week of the new year has treated you all well so far. David saying hello. And Carl Haar is... I'm not sure what that's supposed to be, that, that comment. Uh, David says, I'm wearing Dior Santal Noir on one arm and Garla <laughs> Chalimar Souffle de Parfum on the other. What's your scent of the day? Every, well, there you go. Tell David what you're wearing. Uh, hello from Rainy Austin, says the Udo Pantograph, listening from my commute. Le Lyon took me by surprise. I love it. Ooh, so you're all a little bit ahead of me here. a 2 zn one says, was getting ready to pick up a look. Try again. Was getting ready to pick up a bottle of 22 this weekend, but after this review, priorities could shift. Let us find out. Q George is wearing Le Lyon as well. Uh, hello from Rugby, says JW. Please keep the comments coming, and while I'm reading them, I should also say please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, Louis Anthony Ray says, in love with Lillion from Chanel. Don't know if it's first time smelling it, but oh my God, love it. Salute you from San Diego, Mexico. From San Diego, Mexico. Okay. Is there a San Diego in Mexico? Um, lots of you are wearing it today. Benjamin says, hi from Icy Glasgow. Looking forward to this review. Ordered a sample last week. Hello from the Chilly Midlands, says Audrey. Uh, Q George says, move your, might move your mic a bit. Audio is a bit rough. Ooh, I'm not sure why it should be. Everything looks okay here. Could it, could it, could it be just you, Q George? Okay. Please keep the comments coming, uh, and if you're watching the recording, also feel free to uh, ask a question or leave a comment. I usually get round to them in due course. A little bit of context for today. What we are smelling today is, I should, I could still say, hello, uh, a little crackly. Audio is a little scratchy, says David. Right, in that case, is it going to be technology gremlins time again? Crackly sound... Let's try this. Not sure what else we could be trying, people. Has that improved things at all? Because from where I'm sitting, the setup is the same as it always has been. So it could be, it could be a YouTube issue. How are we doing now? Cracking noise, perhaps static due to the new jump. There is, there is no um, mic attached to here anymore. No, still not good. As if it's rubbing against some cloth or static. <sighs> Um, okay, let's just try disconnecting and reconnecting. Don't you just love live? Love, love. We'll do this. And we'll do this. It's not terrible, we can live with it. Okay, if it's not terrible, <laughs> that's all right. Now better, okay. Maybe we just need it. Oh, thank, thank you very much. We've sorted it out. I always wonder what people think of all of these sorts of asides if they're watching the recording. They sort of think, couldn't this guy have sorted out his, his equipment before we, um, before we started? Um, you're not synced now. <laughs> I really don't know what to say. Maybe we need to start again. Because there is no reason why I shouldn't be in sync. That that sounds like it's a streaming issue, like a YouTube issue. Let's hope it sorts itself out. What we are smelling today is um, Le Lion de Chanel. Uh, and I was going to say it's a new release. And it is a new release in the, in the UK context. It's actually not coming out in the UK officially until the 8th of January. So two days, two days from today. But it has been around in certain markets uh, for a while. I'm pretty sure that one of the first places it launched in was Dubai many, many months ago now. I think it may have come out in, in March or April. And I guess because it was available there in the Middle East, um, people were able to get bottles for themselves. I think it's been available on the French Chanel website for a little while. So people out there have tried it. People out there are aware of it. They know it. And um, 
it it did make it onto a few people's best of 2020 lists already so th there is a lot of hype around this i have tried to read as little as possible about it because i don't want to be prejudiced or biased in any way but i haven't been able to help myself from picking up that lots and lots of people do seem to like it in fact i don't think i've actually read a single negative thing about it or seen a single negative negative thing about it so far so hopes are high expectations are high but it also means that i feel super nervous because this is, this is genuinely going to be a first sniff um it's interesting also to to give it a little bit more context in that it's the first exclusive we've had for a while but um at least in the uk but that isn't because chanel necessarily planned it that way it's because of everything that's been going on in the world for the last year i think we can say that the last one we had was um 1957 but even though it may feel like we actually had it in 1957 it was released in 2019 this is the fourth exclusive to have been created by current in-house perfumer Olivier Polge. You may remember the first one that he gave the brand was Misia, um, and then and then Boy, um, which was wonderful. One of my favourite um, Chanel perfumes, one of my favourite releases of the last decade. Um, a few people have written to me, by the way, to ask um, if I know anything about the Edinburgh scent, you know, Paris Edin Edinburgh um, that was supposed to have been released last year. The release of that has been postponed. In fact, I think I'm correct in saying that the only perfume Chanel ended up releasing on a large scale globally last year, certainly in the UK, was the Lo Privé version of Coco Mademoiselle. So, now you can hear crackling. This is, this is coming with high expectations. Um, comments still coming through. Ooh, am I getting some smell here already? I hope it's not leaking or something. Um, but it's a nice smell. Um, it's okay. Live issues can happen. People are saying that things are in sync. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, Olfactive Story says I tried it one week ago in Belgium. Still not available at my local counter in France. Hello from Tennessee, says Willow Cosmetics. Gino says can't wait to try it and hear your thoughts. Fahmi is watching in Indonesia. Uh, please don't forget to like everybody, says Floating Man. Thank you very much. Very kind. It goes on sale in Taipei this Friday, says Aperol Spritz, but the tester is available starting today. Oh, that's naughty, isn't it? Teasing you for two days. Hello from Germany, says Martin. Shimon says hello there. Hi. Um, don't ever make an ASMR video without crackling. I love your Leon, says Q George. And Angeline says can't wait to try it. We'll be checking it out this Sunday. We need to smell this. Okay, here we go. So, how about this book? Let's do another little pose for for a potentially different thumbnail. This is Le Lion de Chanel. I'm just going to keep calling it, you know, it's a bit of a mouthful saying Le Lion de Chanel each time, isn't it? Are we just going to call it Le Lion, the lion? <sighs> Can you, you, the regular viewers will know that the, the, these nerves are not put on, okay? Because I so want to love um, every single new release, especially from the brands that, that I respect. Drumroll Pre says, says Aperol Spritz, right, here we go. Is the spray not working? No, it's working. I should actually spray this on skin in a second as well, because I'm not going to be wearing, I'm not going to be trying anything else today. Where can it be? Oh, gosh. Oh, mmm. I will definitely be spraying this on skin. Okay, well, the first thing I thought was, hello, Shalimar. Strong, 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 strong bergamot note, as in Shalimar, but, but also, I'm thinking, hello, Coromandel. Which are two really, really good hellos to be, <laughs> to be making in perfumery, wouldn't you think? Okay, so all out warm, ambery perfume, quite animalic as well for a Chanel. Warm, ambery, aka oriental. I know that 
we're, we're trying to move away from using the term oriental but most people are still with the whole oriental thing but okay you know is it more Shalimar than Coromandel says David at the moment boy, I've only just sprayed it right has it even been a minute but and and uh, queer de Russie. I'm liking where this might be going says floating man yes so am I Okay, so what am I getting so far? Is it is it, is everything going to be downhill for the rest of the year from now on? Um, adjectives, says David. Yes. Um, let's think of some adjectives. So, warm, powdery, sweet, but very, very definite, um, strong pronounced citrus note at the top and a bergamot which is why i suppose immediately thought of shalimar a bergamot note at the top which means that you've got the 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 smokiness attached to the citrus which is which is which is what makes bergamot so interesting of course and maybe the suggestion of the tea because bergamot um always makes us think of earl grey uh a very very smooth leather note in there which is what is probably bringing in the suggestion of the animalics not unlike Shalimar at the moment I'm trying to think what isn't that isn't Shalimar about it and I suppose at this stage in its development it doesn't immediately hit you with that ethyl vanillin sweetness so this is this is drier at the moment um And maybe, I saw somebody using the word incense just now, maybe more incensey, and yes, labdanum-like, thank you, Ashfaq, than Shalimar, which maybe is what's also bringing it into queer de Russie territory. But definitely, I mean, it, it must be, at, the, at this initial sniff, it must be the most one of the most overtly, if not the most overtly, um, animalic Chanel I think I've ever smelt, which is appropriate because it's it's meant to, I suppose, convey the, the spirit, the soul, the essence of a lion. Very, very good so far, has to be said. You know, you don't realise sometimes in perfumery or in, 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 in perfume appreciation or perfume love that you need certain things, but you smell this and you think, oh gosh, wow, yes, actually, we did need a kind of love child of Coromandel, Cuy de Russie and Shalimar. Um, I have a press release as well. So let's pop this on here for, for, for a little while and see how it develops. Loads and loads of comments coming through, so and, 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 I, and I won't be able to read them all um, but let me see if I can uh, get through to some of them. Drac says, if I have Shalimar and, Cor Shalimar and Coromandel, do I need this? At the moment, I'm thinking, yeah, probably you do. Uh, Druba says, is it more like Shalimar or de Cologne without the top citruses? Would love to try these older world leathers and this new release. Q. George, I got a lot of smoky birch like in Queer de Russie and resinous labdanum like in Ombre Sultan. I, I wouldn't disagree with that. Absolutely wouldn't disagree with that at all. Does it still have the Chanel aldehyde, says Gina? Well, you, we don't always think of um, Chanel as being totally associated with, with aldehydes, do we? I mean, I know that number five is their signature and that's very aldehydic, but I don't necessarily always think aldehydes. Andy says, I'm led by Mr. P in these matters. Oh, what have I missed something? Do we really... Oh, is this, is this um, going back to using the word oriental? Maybe we'll, we'll save that for another time. Um... Loving the sound of this, says Angeline. Yes. Uh, do you feel like the kind of sand feeling, says Louis? For me, it's sand with smoke. Yes, Queer de Russie and Shalimar, smoky, smoky. Yeah, maybe in a way. Druba says, Glatino Chanel is pushing their boundaries through marketing of a kingly animal. I do feel that much of their offerings have been a bit too safe. However, I'm glad to know this is a departure. Mm. Do you get a Styrax-like smell in it, says Ashfaq? Possibly. Possibly. It's 
really quite beautiful so far on the blotter, it has to be said, really beautiful. Agnes, I saw this at the mall today, but didn't get a chance to sample it because the whole display was too intimidating. I haven't seen the display for it yet. Teacup says, does it smell more clarity, clear, or does it smell filled up like no space between the accords? And that's a that's a really, really good question and a relevant issue to ask in perfumes. No, I think I think it is clear. It is light filled. Shalimar, I suppose, is more enveloping, more... Um, um, oppressive is not the right word because it's not oppressive at all, but it is enveloping, uh, dense. This feels much more open. Um, would you agree it leans more masculine? For me, it's my absolute favourite from the exclusives. Uh, you know me, I'm going to say it's completely unisex. Any lipstick vibe? Not especially. I found it unisex, says Olfactive Stories. Okay, let's see what they say in the press release. It's a very, very long press release because it's a whole book, as per usual, from Chanel. So I don't intend to read all of it, but I will um, try and pick out the most interesting bits. I haven't looked at it. Starts with a quotation from uh, Gabrielle Chanel, whose, whose legacy isn't aging particularly well, but I get also, let's put that one aside for the moment. It says, I am a Leo. And like a lion, I use my claws to prevent people from doing me harm. But believe me, I suffer more from scratching than from being scratched. Poor thing. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Life under the sign of the lion. It says, certain coincidences have the power to forge destinies. For Gabrielle Chanel, the lion was one of them. The fifth sign of the zodiac. The lion watched over her from the day she was born on the 19th of August, 1883. Superstitious and fascinated by the stars, Gabrielle quickly considered the animal associated with her birth date as a source of luck. In 1920, devastated by the sudden death of the love of her life boy, uh, life boy Kappel, etc., etc., um, she went with some friends on a trip to Venice. Gabrielle fell madly in love with the city and experienced it like a rebirth. She drew strength from the bustling energy and the artistic and fashionable atmosphere of the city, like her under the sign of the lion. Very true. A guardian figure of the city that captivated and inspired her, the feline symbol of bravery and renewal was everywhere, sovereign towering over St Mark's Square, decorating pediments and palace doors, gracing mosaics and stone statues, her revered animal filled her with the strength to carry on. Venice marked the beginning of a new life. Okay, so I suppose that is where the inspiration has come from. Olivier Polge did not devote his new creation to the animal, but the vision that Chanel cultivates of it. Wild and majestic, Gabrielle Chanel's totem animal is the symbol of a power that chooses to protect rather than dominate, and the emblem of absolute elegance. Fueled by the many faces of the lion in the world of Chanel, um, Olivier Polge endeavoured to transpose this radiant strength of character incarnated by the lion in scent. This appropriation of the animal by the house gave him the idea to leave his own mark on a powerful archetype, oriental fragrances. Taming the codes um, of this olfactory family, he imagined a trail with a refined intensity contained by a soft and warm signature. Let's get a little bit more detailed. Are we going to get more detailed? Here we go. Naturally, a few sparkling citrus notes, lemon, bergamot, bring the essential burst befitting to the first moments of, the, of a great fragrance. Only a few seconds are needed for the shimmering gold fragrance to unfurl the warmth of its oriental imprint. Gold is actually a good word for it, whereas Shalimar is ambery, and, and, and Shalimar is such a sapphire scent, isn't it? An ambery accord tamed by the perfumer creator's skill, and faceted like the thousand and one faces of the lion in the world of Chanel, its heart of labdanum, a lively resin with animal notes, is tamed with a custom-crafted essence. A custom-crafted essence. What does that mean? Smoothed of its rough edges, it concentrates the ambery, velvety effects that gradually verge on leather. Not so gradually. While an infusion of vanilla from Madagascar exalts the quintessential ingredient of oriental fragrances. Labdanum and vanilla intertwine in a smooth and enveloping pas de deux, blending together into a deep trail that lingers on the skin. Sensual and creamy sandalwood tempers the musky vegetality of a raw patchouli. Endowed with a restraint that that could be the Coromandel feeling. Endowed with a restraint that is the privilege of true power, this 
Oriental radiates a confident and pronounced elegance, majestic and solar, olfactory finery. Olfactory finery. Try saying that quickly. And then it ends with <laughs> every geek stream go ticking off the ones that you've tried. Um, well, I have to say, at least at least it's a, it's a fairly um, prosaic press release. Right, we need to do, with, with the amount of time um, that we've got left, I, I need to do this on skin. need to make sure I haven't got anything else there. No, I don't think I did. There will definitely be a blotter update on this one, and I expect I will have uh, quite a bit to say about it on the blog when I eventually do the, 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 the blog post on this. Uh, some more comments. Um... El exclusive calls for a skin test, says Aperol Spritz. There you go. Uh, teacup, good old press release, good for a chuckle, though it might be a translation issue. I suffer more from scratching than being scratched. Yeah, I like that bit too. Floating Man, you know it only makes sense for you to try this side by side with Tiger Tiger by Francesca Bianchi next time. I need to get a sample of that. You're absolutely right. Do you think this is a large feline or a tiny kitten in terms of projection? Oh, hard to judge that from here. But it's not going to be tiny. It's not... Oh, that bergamot note is... Pretty good. And actually the lemoniness comes out more on skin. Um, David says, gave in and placed an order for a bottle while watching. Wow, I should be on commission. <laughs> if anybody from Chanel is watching, make a note. Ashfaq says, congratulations on your blind bike. Hugh George, it goes more vanillic sweet smoke in the dry down once the citrus freshness dies out. Very addictive scent. Uh, Drax says, I'm going to squirt some Attaque le Soleil for the labdanum near my Coromandel and hope for the best. I was never crazy about that from, from that one from Meta Libre. Druba says, did they send the whole bottle or was it available at the shops? Uh, no, this is this is a sample. This is a sample. Um, and Jess, is it available in Europe? Yes, I think it will be officially from Friday. Um, and NT says, hello from, or Nikki from Portland, Oregon. Right, let's smell this. See, on my skin so far, I mean, it could be because certain elements have oversaturated my nose as well from the blotter, but it is definitely, on skin, it definitely feels like a more lemony um, Shalimar than a bergamot Shalimar. And it's got a soapy quality as well on skin. Um, but but maybe, maybe I'm just bringing out or picking up the leather more today. But this is, this is, this is what I keep coming back to. It's like a sort of the triangulation of Coromandel, Chanel and Cuir de Russie, which makes it really rather wonderful. So, mm, do you feel oud in this? Maybe that's why this was released as an exclusive in Dubai. Uh, no, no. And I would imagine that maybe the reason why it was released in Dubai was because maybe retail was, was carrying on a little bit more normally in that part of the world compared to how it was in Europe a few months ago. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But no, no, no. This, is, this isn't an an oud scent in that way, but 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 ambery scents, vanillic ambery scents, are very popular in the Middle East. So maybe they thought, well, if we want to release it somewhere first, may as well be Dubai. Um, and yes, I just saw a question that I can answer. Audrey says, "Do you know what the price will be in the UK?" I do indeed. The seventy-five mils will be priced at one hundred and fifty-five pounds, and the two hundred mils will be two hundred and eighty pounds, which I guess makes it. Does that make it a little bit more expensive than, than, than most of the other exclusives? Jaja ja says, totally agree on your comment on being more lemony on skin. Looking forward to your base note reflections. And Drax says, is the animalic leather coming from the labdanum? What type of animalic? Birch tarry animalic. I think somebody said that earlier as well. This, and Ashfaq says... Um, oh, Audrey says more expensive. Yeah, I thought it might be. Ashwak says, I think this might go pretty well with some aged Hindi oud oils I have. <sighs> Sounds very good. Um, and finally, all fact of stories. I think that people who enjoy Shalimar and Coromandel will enjoy this. I think you're absolutely right. OK, I think we're done. So blotter update coming in due course. And um, also there will be some thoughts on this on my blog post on it. 
So we have done our first video of 2021. I've done as well um, before the end of the weekend. But until then, Happy New Year once again. Stay safe. Be good. Take care. Bye.